people all over the country use public transportation to get where they need to go. Most of us are already aware that public transportation helps reduce fuel consumption, pollution, and at the same time decreases traffic congestion on local freeways and highways. Financing public transportation doesn't always come from the fares the buses and trains charge. Building and operating public transportation in highly populated areas of the country can cost billions of dollars. Which raises the question, where does the money come from? We'll take you to the state of Utah, where their transit authority has issued billions of dollars to extend and improve public transportation to accommodate their growing communities. The Wasatch Front is one of the fastest growing urban areas in the nation. We're projected to reach three million residents of the Wasatch Front by, by the year 2030. Um, with that kind of growth, mass transit really is critical to our future. Without good multimodal transportation, we run the risk of being trapped in traffic gridlock and having even worse air quality than we have today and having serious demands on our infrastructure. Mass transit is one of the ways that we're going to be able to address that. Prior to the 2002 Winter Olympics, government officials agreed the transit system had to improve to accommodate the millions of people visiting Utah before, during, and after the Olympics. The advent of the Olympics in 2002, you really had a vision of if we're going to do something like the Olympics here in Salt Lake, let's put a transit system in place that really will show the world everything that Salt Lake has to offer. And so that was the genesis of the tracks projects. Between 1997 and 2011, the Utah Transit Authority has issued nearly $2 billion worth of fixed and variable rate municipal bonds to fund public transportation projects. Well, for the past several years, UTA has been in the mode of issuing bonds to help fund our Frontlines 2015 program. That's a program to expand passenger rail along the Wasatch Front by 70 miles in seven years. The 2015 Frontline programs include a group of five UTA rail projects to be in full operation sometime during 2015. These projects include an airport line that will run from downtown Salt Lake to the Salt Lake City International Airport, other light rail routes that will transfer residents from local suburbs to downtown Salt Lake City and the University of Utah, an extension of the Frontrunner high-speed commuter rail that will run from downtown Salt Lake to the Provo, Utah area where Brigham Young University is located. We've issued a number of bonds for the services. Uh, they've been primarily 30-year uh, municipal bonds. Part of our portfolio includes uh, very short-term variable rate bonds that uh, have very favorable interest rates at this time in the market. Taking advantage of public transportation can not only save time and fuel, but it also helps reduce the amount of air pollution caused by the emissions from our vehicles. I think it's important to have public transit to help people get around who don't have cars. It's also important to reduce um, the pollution that come from automobiles and um, it helps move people at peak times like to university basketball games or peak hours of uh, to and from work. The 2015 Frontlines program was originally part of a long-range plan for Utah to build five commuter train lines by the year 2030. In 2006, government officials decided that based on population growth projections, Utahns may not want to wait that long. So the decision was made to have the residents vote on whether they wanted to pay for these new lines to be built now. Voters in both Utah and Salt Lake County approved a sales tax increase of one quarter of one percent to help fund the new rail lines so commuters could take advantage of these transportation options sooner. Zions Bank Public Finance has worked with the Utah Transit Authority since the early 1980s. With the increase in population and the need to build more commuter lines, UTA turned to its financial advisor, Brian Baker, to configure a new plan to build new train lines at the lowest possible rates. When they first started, they were really just a bus company. They had a few bus routes and they had a few buses, they had a garage. And so when they did small financings, it was basically to uh, increase the amount of service that they offered. With the increase in the population here, you know, they just a couple of years ago rebuilt I-15 in Salt Lake County. They're currently rebuilding I-15 in Utah County. And if you ask yourself, well, what if they needed to build more freeways? Could they add an additional one or two lanes to the I-15 in Salt Lake County? They simply couldn't. There's just not the space. And so really you have to look at, at other options. And transit is a great way that everybody feels good about for moving people quickly. And whether you use it or not, it's a benefit to you because it's getting people off of the road and getting them in, in trains. 
Although the debt burden UTA and government officials have put on the citizens of Utah is considerable, they are confident that the money invested and the services offered now and in the future will be well worth it. With the recession, it's been a challenge for us to go out and borrow so much with our sales tax revenues lower than originally projected. But we also have had contractor costs come in at less than projected. Material costs have been less than projected. And even the amount of interest that we're paying has been lower because we've been getting very favorable interest rates. So in the long term, when you pay that back over 30 years, we're ultimately saving as much as uh, half a billion dollars. For more information on how bonds can affect your community, tune in to our YouTube and Roku channel.